Hey guys, back again for 31 Days of Horror, and tonight I'm going to talk about Cabin Fever. Now, I haven't watched this recently. I haven't watched it for years, really, and the last time that I tried to watch it, somebody found the remake, which I didn't even know there was a remake, and there was no need to be a remake, and the remake is terrible, so forget about that crap. This movie came out in 2004, directed by Eli Roth. This is the one that you want to see. So, I didn't get a chance to see another movie the other night, because I watched The Mangler, I had the night off, and had to work today and everything. So I need to get back on schedule to where I watch a movie and then I review one. But I watched this probably like 50 times back in the day, or more, who knows. But I would just let this play over and over and over again. This is really one of my favorites of a cult horror movie. Again, it's a completely different take on a horror movie. And this movie is basically about kind of like a flesh-eating disease. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the story, kind of go through the general plot. Like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen it. But basically the idea is, you know, like a lot of horror movie cliches where a group of friends, uh, kids are going to stay in a cabin for the summer or a week or weekend or whatever. But they're going on vacation to a cabin just to party it up. They're going to drink and and play games or whatever, or hunt and fish, and just enjoy their time being free or whatever, right? So, um, they get out there, and one of the characters is out shooting his gun, or he's hunting, and he sees this guy that looks kind of like a homeless bum, that's kind of like bleeding, and he's like, help me, help me, and the guy that has the gun or whatever, he freaks out, and I think he shoots the, the bomb, but he doesn't kill him. He's like, no, like, stay back. Like, don't come close to me. Like, he could tell, like, he's sick. He's like, I don't want that. Like, so he shot him or whatever. Then he runs and, uh, or forgets about it or whatever. Like, later on, they're partying in the cabin. Then that same guy that got shot, like, knocks on the door. And he's like, help me. And the guy that shot him goes up and, like, slams the door. He's like, no way. Like, we're not letting that guy in. And, you know, they found out that he shot him and stuff, and they try to get him to leave, but he won't. But they basically end up killing the guy, somehow. I don't remember if they hit him with a car, or they, they end up burning, like, his body alive or something. But anyways, like, he's just wanting help, but, you know, he's diseased, and they end up killing him. But anyways, long story short, the disease spreads, and uh, it ends up going through all these kids. But it has some pretty uh, good scenes. And I want to talk a little bit about Eli Roth. Because he directed this and he does act in it a little bit. But he's not a main character. He shows up as just kind of a random hitchhiker. They're like having like a campfire. And he just like comes out of nowhere. I think he brings like weed. And they smoke the weed or whatever. And then he kind of like disappears. Like he's not really significant I don't think. But he just he just pops up. I was... I love this movie so much, and then he made Hostel, and I love that movie a lot, and I got to see that in theaters, and I think he directed the, the sequel, the first, or the Hostel 2, um, I'm sure he was involved in that too, and he kind of fell off the map, I think, you know, he might have done some stuff since then, but I thought he was going to be like the next great horror director, like he is great what he's done, but he just kind of disappeared, and... I don't know if he's working on anything now or what. Um, but, yeah, let's see. Eli Roth. <sighs> I think, you know, I want to mention what this says on the front of this DVD. It says, An unrelenting, gruesomely funny bloodbath. I loved it. And this is a quote by Peter Jackson, who directed The Lord of the Rings. So Peter Jackson loves this movie. And, um... Peter Jackson made a lot of really gory, nasty movies back in the day before The Lord of the Rings, and I have one of them, Bad Taste. I really love that. He made Meet the Feebles. It's a messed up puppet movie with... It's like Sesame Street on crack, where there's like violence and gangs and drugs and all that stuff. But um, he also did Bad... or Brain Dead or Dead Alive, um, a zombie movie that's like one of the goriest movies ever. And it's pretty cool that he likes this. It says, A blast of good gory fun that just won't quit. By Peter Travers. Basically, everybody ends up dying. dying. Okay, so there's like one sole survivor or whatever trying to get help. 
the people are trying to get help and nobody like wants to help them just like they didn't want to help this bum and like you know when one of the friends first gets it one of the girls first gets it like they want to lock her into a shed like nobody wants to help her <laughs> and um but in the end of the movie i'll just cut to the chase the end of the movie um basically the sole survivor or whatever like a SWAT team comes in kind of and like mows down everybody with like machine guns and like they burn like all the bodies like they get rid of they try to like get rid of the whole disease <laughs> so that's how it ends but then you see like a body like in the water in the end so like the disease is transferred to the water there were some sequels I think they made a second one and a third one but they were not directed by Eli Roth and they were garbage I think but I'm still interested in seeing those the remake I have no idea why that was done but from what I've seen of the remake, it was almost like word for word, like scene for scene, but with like different actors and like completely watered down and not as good. Oh, grisly geysers of gore, homicidal hillbillies, and an infectious sense of humor. What more could you hope for in a fright flick by Colin Covert of the Minneapolis State Tribune? A potent blend of dread, gore, and gallows humor by Stephen Holden of the New York Times. Cabin fever may do for cabin rentals what Jaws did for beach parties. Gary Dowell by the Dallas Morning News. Um, so there are some famous scenes in here. Basically when, I think the first time when they find out that the girl is infected by this, um, there's like a couple and her boyfriend, like they're in bed and they're about to get it on or whatever he's they're kissing and there's like piano music there's like this uh score that's playing and it's like this beautiful score but it's kind of like haunting and he's like putting they're like under the covers and he's putting his hand like down by her leg or whatever and he pulls his hand out and there's like blood all over it and he's like oh my god what and like they pull back the cover and you see like her her legs like been like eaten like it's all bloody and by this disease and they're like oh my god it's all it's all like uh, sinewy, gooey, bloody mess. It's nasty. Um, and then like later on, I don't know if it's the same girl or another girl. Maybe it's another girl. Or maybe this scene is before that scene. I don't know. Because it's been a while since, like I said, since we've seen it. But we do get a scene of a girl shaving her legs. And as she's pulling back the razor, like it's peeling off her skin. And she's like, ah, ah. <laughs> like she's trying to do it. But terrible, terrible. You can see the back of this, some of the characters, that the guy with the shotgun. I know it's hard to see, but some of the people. It does have a little bit of a synopsis on here. It says, Jeff, Karen, Paul, Macy, or Marcy, sorry, Marcy and Brett, Bert. One, two, three, four, five kids. Jeff, Karen, Paul, Marcy, and Bert. Embark on a vacation deep into the mountains. With the top down and the music up, they drive to a remote cabin to enjoy their last days of decadence after college. Okay, so it's after college. Then somebody gets sick. Karen's skin starts to bubble and burn as something grows inside her, tunneling beneath her flesh. As the others try to save her, they look at one another and realize that any one of them could be next. One by one, they turn on each other and the rest of the town realizing that the disease is the least of their problems. So yeah, some of the townspeople are weird. There's a sheriff in here that's weird. He's like, oh, you guys like to party, huh? Like, I'm the party man. Like, I don't know, he parties with them. Um, but he doesn't, like, help them. So yeah, I don't know. I need to watch it again. But uh says, Cabin Fever, Terror in the Flesh. So in this one, like, the villain is basically the disease. So it's definitely pre prevalent to today, to our COVID times here. But uh, you see the, some of the action in the trailer that uh, is a pretty fast-paced uh, movie. Like, I really enjoy it. That's why I watched it so many times, because it's just a breeze to watch. It's funny. It's gory. It's just crazy, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's like as soon as it's over, I just want to hit play again. 
So I definitely suggest that you check out this one. And if you've seen Hostel and you really like that, then check this out if you haven't seen it because this was before then. And, um, you know, I think this is kind of like a, a ode to like kind of like the Grindhouse movies. Like this is like a, or this is like a cult classic, not really like Grindhouse, I guess, but it's like, yeah, it's like a cult classic horror where Hostel is more of a much more big budget kind of movie. So this is more like his independent kind of film, I guess I should say, whatever, like his roots, the beginnings, and uh, this has earned a spot up there. And Eli Roth, when uh, Quentin Tarantino and Rodriguez did their Grindhouse uh, movies, they did Planet Terror and Death Proof. And they had like grindhouse trailers that were like teasers that were like fake um, to play like in the theater when they had this grindhouse double feature. They played like fake trailers for movies. And one of them was a horror movie called Thanksgiving. And Eli Roth did that one. You can find that on YouTube. You should see that. It really disappoints me that that's not actually a movie. I really wish that Eli Roth would go full bore and make that movie Thanksgiving because it looks so awesome. Uh, anyway. That's going to be it, so this will be number five, and I don't know what I'm going to watch next. What's it going to be? All right, guys. See you later. Signing off.